For this video, I'm going to show you a cool little trick you could use to help you survive and thrive in a zombie apocalypse by reloading old primers with matches. Let's start this experiment with a few empty cartridge casings like these 9mm shells I salvaged from a local indoor shooting range. Looking at the casings, you can see that after the bullet's been fired, all that remains is an empty brass shell and a dented centerfire primer pressed into the bottom. This humble little primer is the piece that actually makes the bullet work when you pull the trigger, and without it, most ammunition would be completely useless. Now to better understand how ammunition cartridges are fired, let's disassemble a Glock 19 handgun and look for the mechanism that actually strikes the primer. Removing the recoil spring from the slide assembly gives us easy access to the barrel, and if we flip the gun upside down, you can see the barrel drops right out. Now look closely at the center of the slide assembly, and you should notice there's a tiny spring-loaded firing pin poking in and out of the firing chamber. This is the small steel pin that jumps out and cracks the primer when you pull the trigger. When the primer explodes, the gunpowder inside the cartridge ignites and sends the bullet flying. Now we know how a gun fires bullets, so let's take a closer look at the bullets themselves. Break a 9mm round into its components, and you'll see there are basically four main parts to them. A copper-plated lead bullet, 4.4 grains of smokeless gunpowder, a brass cartridge casing, and of course a loaded primer pushed into the bottom. Now the gunpowder is what fires the bullets, but even though it's highly flammable, it won't actually work for reloading the primers themselves, and I'll show you why. If we give the pile a good hard smack with a hammer, nothing really happens, and that's because gunpowder isn't impact sensitive. Primers need a friction sensitive powder like this stuff I made, designed to detonate the instant it's hit with enough force. In its simplest form, a primer is just a small brass cup filled with a tiny bit of explosive compound, ready to detonate as soon as it gets smacked the right way. Now, usually you just buy new ones for reloading ammunition, but what if something happened and you couldn't get them anymore? Well, here's a simple idea you might want to tuck away for a rainy day. To get a primer out of the casing, you're going to need a small bolt, a tiny wire nail, and a hex nut. Start by setting the bottom of the bullet casing on the hex nut, then place the nail inside and make sure it slides through the small hole in the center into the primer cup at the bottom. If we gently tap the nail between 10 to 15 times, you can see the bottom drops right out of the casing. Now take a quick look at the bottom of the shell and you'll see a little pocket where the primer used to sit, as well as a tiny flash hole in the center. The actual primer itself is sitting right there on the table in the center of the hex nut. Now you can see the primer has something stuck in it that looks like a little radioactive symbol. It needs to come out and we can pluck it up fairly easily with a small nail or a fine tip screwdriver. This little flower looking thing is called an anvil and the tiny metal dish is the primer cup. Now get our primer ready for reloading, we'll first need to scrape the old primer powder out of the cup, then find a hard metal surface we can use to flatten the dent out. Press the flat tip of the bolt firmly to the bottom of the primer cup and give it 5-6 to six good whacks with a hammer. That should be about all it takes to get the job done. If not, then try using sandpaper or a metal file to flatten the tip a bit more and try again. Our goal here is to revert the dirty dimpled primer cups back into clean cups with flat bottoms. And they don't have to be perfect, just as close as you can get them. Alright, with our primer parts cleaned and reformed, we can move on to making the impact sensitive composition next, which can be done fairly easily with a box of safety matches. All you need is one single safety match, and if you use a hammer to gently tap the head on a piece of paper, you'll see the fuel flakes right off. Now use the bottom of a soup spoon to crush the match head flakes into even smaller pieces, then grind them around a bit until you've worked the mix into an extremely fine powder. The finer you can get it, the better it'll work. Next, we'll need a sharp knife or a razor blade to scrape a little red powder off the side of the matchbox. And the powder from a quarter to a half of the strip is about all you need. The goal here is to end up with twice as much of the match head powder as red striker strip powder, but make sure the two don't mix together until you really want them to. When these two powders mix, they become sensitive to shock and can spontaneously explode. So it's a good idea to be as gentle with them as possible and use a piece of paper to carefully fold them into each other when you're ready to mix them together. When the powder looks thoroughly mixed, it should be ready for use, and you'll want to do a quick quality control check by placing a small sample on a hard surface and giving it a smack. If it explodes with a snap, then it's ready to go. You may have realized by now this is the same mixture I used for making my Thundercaps in a previous project. Thundercaps are impact sensitive stickers that could be used as exploding targets for BB gun practice or just for having a little fun exploring science in the backyard. So check for how to make them in another project video. Alright, we know our primer composition is ready, so let's move on to reloading the primer itself. Cut the tip off a plastic straw and use it as a scoop to very carefully transfer the powder into the primer cup. Fill it to overflowing, then use the wooden matchstick as an improvised tamp to gently compress the mixture down into the bottom. 
The powder will pack tightly enough that you won't have to worry about it falling back out, and you really shouldn't need much more powder than this. But if you want to be extra sure your primers fire, then just refill the cup and tap it one more time. A single match head makes enough powder to reload two to three primers, and when compacted properly, the cups will be anywhere from halfway to three quarters full. Now let's gently drop the anvils back in the same way they came out, with the pointy part facing down and the flower petals reaching upward. It's not super critical to have the anvils perfectly straight in the cups just yet, because they'll actually straighten themselves out on their own when we press them back into the primer pockets in just a second. Now getting the primers back into position is as simple as lining the case heads over top, then carefully pressing down slowly but firmly to reseat the cup back inside. Of course the primers won't go all the way in by hand, but if we flip the casings over and use a blunt metal surface to slowly press the primer the rest of the way in, the cups easily nestle into position, automatically aligning the anvils inside as they do. Just like that, we've got one live loaded primer that should work just about as well as any other. Now it's really important to mention that this mix is experimental and needs to be treated with the highest levels of caution and respect. These improvised primers use a different kind of explosive composition than commercial primers do, so they should only be used as a last resort in extreme emergencies. I did a number of torture tests and found they do take a surprising amount of abuse, and I wasn't able to get any to go off accidentally. However, it's still really good practice to treat them like they could blow up spontaneously at any given moment, and always make sure to err on the side of caution just to be safe. With that being said, let's test these ones out and see how they do under pressure. I clamped an empty casing in my bench vise with the primer side facing up, and you can see that if we line the tip of a screwdriver with the center of the primer and give it a sharp whack, it explodes, blasting fire and hot gases out the bottom of the tube. And guess what? We can reload the primer again the same way. It's important to note these are empty brass shells without any bullets or gunpowder in them. If you tried bench testing a loaded shell like this, it could very well be the last experiment you ever did. Okay, the primers are working great, so let's go one step further and test whether the firing pin in the handgun will set them off when we pull the trigger. Listen closely, and you'll hear it fires right off like a cap gun on steroids. This means our improvised primers work exactly the way they were intended. In fact, after weeks of testing and over 100 experiments, these primers have all been surprisingly consistent and work for me 100% of the time. So why don't we take it to the ultimate level by testing them on the real thing? I reloaded five more primers and carefully reseated them into these five shells, marked with black dots to identify them as experimental. I took these special rounds of ammo to an indoor shooting range to test them out, and you can see that impressively, they fire off exactly how you'd expect them to. These rounds of ammo seem to work just about as well as the real thing, but remember, reloading primers is experimental, very dangerous, and probably not even legal where you live. So rather than trying this for yourself, just be satisfied knowing you could if you had to, and tuck the knowledge away for a rainy day. Well now you know how to master the zombie apocalypse by reloading boxer primers with matches. By the way, if you don't want to waste striker strip powder, you could always try crushing strike anywhere matches instead. The ratios will be different every time and they won't be as consistent, but you can get them to work just as well. Well that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you'll like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. Hey guys, that's the end of this video, but it's not the end of the adventure. Click here to see the last project and click here to see the next. I've made over 100 project videos for you to check out and I'm still making new videos every five days. So click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's free, and if you update your YouTube notification settings, you can get an email every time I upload. In the meantime, here are a few other videos I recommend watching. They're all favorites for different reasons and you'll learn something new in every project. Thank you for watching, sharing, and supporting my videos and I'll see you in the next project video. I'll talk to you then. Hey, a special shout out and big thanks to everyone supporting these projects on Patreon. Your donations are helping me make more videos and helping me find bigger and better ways to give back to the community. Thank you kindly for your generosity and may the good karma you're sending out so freely return to bless you back with interest.